Hey guys, in today's video, I wanna be showing you how I made this hobbit hole, or at least a very similar one. I'm gonna be going over materials used, uh, methods used, and basically the how-to for uh, constructing and painting a little hobbit hole like this for the Middle Earth strategy battle game, or Lord of the Rings dioramas, or Dungeons and Dragons, or whatever you wanna use it for. So let's get into it. So pictured in the frame is everything that I will be using for this build today. And I think I included everything, but yeah, it's all right here in the frame. And I'm just gonna cut to individual items and talk about them for a little bit. So first up, our main material is foam. This is the main component of this build. This pink XPS foam makes up the hill portion of the build. Um, it's a nice blocky material. You can cut it and carve it to any size that you want, any shape pretty much, and I do all my cutting by hand, but I'm sure you can use a hot wire cutter. In fact, that would be optimal and save a lot of time, but this is totally doable by hand, and that's what I do with my X-Acto knife. So yeah, pink XPS foam, I get this from Home Depot. You can get it at Lowe's, I think, any hardware store. I get the two by two sheets uh, from Home Depot, and I think this is two inch thickness or an inch. Um, next up, we have sort of more specialty XPS foam. This is from the Army Painter. Uh, it's thinner sheets of XPS foam. And I find this takes carving and impressions a lot better than the pink stuff from Home Depot. Our last bit of foam is just plain foam board, uh, the dollar stuff from the Dollar Tree. This foam, foam board, um, I use it as the silhouette or the shadow of our whole build. So the, the ground layer, uh, the hole will go on, on this sheet and everything else goes on top of this basically. Um, and I do peel off the, the side or the, the paper on the on either end and it usually comes off quite nicely. Um, I also will use this stuff for smaller details in the build like the hobbit hole door might be made from this as well as maybe one or two of the wooden sections of the front uh, of the hobbit home might be made from this. Next up, we just have a utility knife. I talked about this a little bit, but I use this to carve my foam. Um, you wanna have one that has replaceable blades so that you can keep your blades nice and sharp for different projects. It's retractable and the blades snap off and also the whole section comes out so you can slot in replacement blades. Definitely get a nice utility knife if you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, foam projects. Next up, I have various craft wood. Um, this is almost like a very skinny popsicle stick type of craft wood. And then this is balsa wood, which you know, as you might know is very like soft and it breaks very easily. Um, it's very lightweight. And yeah, so balsa wood and these popsicle almost type of craft sticks. I'll use these for various things in the build, such as like the, the siding on the, um, the Hobbit front and whatnot. Okay, next I have various craft paints and specialty paints, whatever paint you have basically to paint or build. Um, definitely don't waste all of your gaming paint on this kind of build. I'll use this maybe to paint the Hobbit, like house door and, and you know, various detail bits. Uh, but as far as the main painting goes, I'll use these craft paints, these cheap tubes of craft paint. And I try to stick with neutral colors when getting these kind of things, except for Hobbit homes, you can definitely get some greens and, and more vibrant colors, reds, yellows, that kind of thing. Uh, so craft paint and, you know, more specialty paint, depending on the level of detail you want to capture. And then along with this section, we have uh, Mod Podge. This is an invaluable tool in your crafting journey. Uh, definitely pick up some matte Mod Podge. I use this as a base coat on almost all of my builds, mixed with some black or gray or brown paint, whatever look you're going for. Next up, I have a hot glue gun. This is how I glue all the components of my builds together. Uh, yeah, not much to say about this, just a hot glue gun and lots of extra glue sticks. So next up, I have um, flocking and various other scenery bits. This is just some uh, flocking that you can get from like Hobby Lobby in the model railroad and model section of the store. Um, this is a more specialty for tabletop gaming mix from Geek Gaming Scenics. This is their pine forest ground cover, and I find that this stuff mixes really well with something like this to create a sort of substrate to go over your builds. Um, 
hobbit holes are covered in earth and grass. Uh, they're built into the hillside, so I'll be creating the hill texture with this stuff. And then, you know, various tufts um, from any brand you want that sells nice tufts because Hobbit homes should have lots of flowers and grass and nature all around them, so. And just really quick, I have my aluminum foil ball. I use this to texture my foam. You just press it into the foam and it takes like a more natural texture than just smooth foam, so yeah. That's everything I'll use to uh, make this Hobbit house. So the first thing I'm doing is creating the face of the Hobbit home. Um, this is the bit that sticks out out of the hillside. I'll we'll just cut it to shape. I want to have this sort of oval top. Good enough. Um, so this is going to stick into our hillside. Next up, we'll be roughly cutting our pink foam to closely match the shape of our white foam. So next up, we've cut our pink foam to roughly the same silhouette, except for the sides, of course, of our white foam. And I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit and then do it again for the other three pieces of pink foam to one piece of white foam. All right, so if you're following along, um, you want your pink foam to be three pieces deep. Uh, this is, will be the hillside in our build. And you want it to be almost roughly the same silhouette as the white foam that will be your hobbit facing bit um not exactly the same silhouette and the front one is should be the biggest one the rest can sort of taper down because this will be our hillside we want it to have a natural uh, sort of shape if we can or as natural as we can get so i'm going to do some more carving to the pink foam to sort of make it look uh, more uniform i think So I've done a little more carving to our pink foam to make it more resemble a hillside. You can see the bits I've cut away here, just thin little scraps here and there to make everything flow together. Um, so again, this is what we're looking at so far. Next up, I'm using a two ounce takeout cup container to create the shape of our door. I'm using the thin foam board to create our door. Simply trace the smaller circle of the takeout container. That's the bottom of the takeout container. Trace it into the foam with a pencil. And then I'll flip the takeout container around because we're gonna have a layer of brickwork on the outside of our door. Make sure it's centered on your smaller circle and then create your bigger circle. So this is what you should be left with, um, a larger circle with a smaller one on the inside. And we're gonna cut this shape out with our utility knife. Not too bad for a freehand cut. We'll clean it up a little bit. Next, we're gonna create some texture on this piece. The inner circle is gonna be wood for the planks on the door. The outer circle is gonna be bricks. So we're gonna use our knife to create some texture. So I'm gonna carve thin lines. These will be the planks of our door. for the bricks. And then I 
I'm gonna use a pencil to make these wide, these lines wider. So I'll follow the same cuts that I made with my knife, just with my pencil. Make these little cuts show up better. So after carving in my lines with my knife and then widening my lines with my pencil, this is what we're looking at. And I'm gonna quickly texture it with my aluminum foil ball by firmly pressing down into the foam. The foam then takes on the texture from the ball. So our build will look more natural. I apologize for the noise, somebody's cutting down a tree or something, but we're gonna be continuing to build the front end of our Hobbit home. So I'm gonna texture this entirely with our aluminum foil ball. So that's been textured. You can see our door will just fit right on there like that. I'll quickly make a bit of a frame for the door uh, using the balsa wood to first see where I want to cut it and then I will cut it so that it is on it's the same length on either side of the door all right so I've just done a few more things off camera uh, it was hard to film but I finished out the front of the Hobbit house um, this side I carved some bricks into the foam um, I've got the door on there I've got a little doorknob made from green stuff this side will have these partial wooden planks covering this section. And then up here, I took a piece of thin foam board and sort of bent it to the shape of our backboard here and carved some wood texture on there. I also carved wood grain into the door itself. So that will be the front of our hobbit hole. And then over here, I've carved a little chimney. I've glued the main hill to the silhouette. I also made a fence just using craft wood and then I did texture some cobblestone, uh, carved it into the foam board. So everything's coming together and I think I'm gonna prime everything now. All right, I'm just priming everything with almost equal parts black paint and Mod Podge. Um, this is gonna harden up our foam and seal everything in so that our texture is protected and sealed in. So we're just gonna slap this on everything that we've built so far. So everything's primed up in this black paint mixture with the Mod Podge. Um, it's starting to dry and so I'm just gonna begin by painting the Hobbit hole face a bit before it goes on to the rest of the build. So I'll paint it separately. I'll paint this and then I'll attach the two. finished painting the front end of the house. I've done a few things on the main structure such as the chimney and the base coating on this cobblestone bit here. I think my next step is going to be to base coat all of this excluding the chimney and this area of course. Uh, base coat it all in an earth brown sort of color. That way when I put my flocking on um, it, you know, it will sort of add to that earth feel that there's, you know, just earth underneath all of the flocking, so. Okay, the next step is flocking the model. So I've got this paint mixture, which is brown paint, a little black paint, and Mod Podge with just a splash of water to keep things uh, moving and wet. I'm using this as my adhesive, as well as another base coating of this earth color. So I'm just gonna slap this onto the brown parts of the model and then put various flocking mixtures on there to create and build up our, um, our hill and our earth texture and whatnot. So I've got various mixes here, which I'll be using and I'll show you guys the finished result. Also, these bits are glued on now. The fence is glued on and the facing is glued on. All right, so I've finished assembling and painting it up and I've also flocked it. Um, the only other thing I might do on this build is going with a dark wash on this stonework right here, but this is done. Um, 
not too bad for a quick little build. So yeah, that's how you can kind of make your own little hobbit hole for your Shire army if you're playing the Middle Earth strategy battle game. Ah uh, yeah, thanks for watching.